Hi guys, this is uh, Robert Hopkins. I'm the executive chef of the Relish Modern Tapas, the restaurant you see behind us. And uh, this is the intro to a uh, world of small plate dining. And uh, come on inside and welcome to my world. The first uh, item that we're going to work on today is an item that we're doing on a wax tapas. This is a class, classic uh, tapas item. Uh, it's called Alfonso's Flight. Uh, what we're going to do is you're going to start off with uh, two crusts with a crustini of bread. You're going to press on some manchego cheese. This is three month old manchego cheese. And the history of this, the reason I call it Alfonso's Flight, is the legend is the way tapas got started was King Alfonso El Sabio, the wise of Spain. Uh, was traveling in a particular region of Spain, and while he was traveling, a local tavern owner found out that he was going to be stopping in to have a glass of Shiraz. It was a particularly dusty day, so he didn't want to have any dust in the king's wine. So he quickly poured his glass of wine and then took a piece of Serrano ham and put it over the top of the glass of Shiraz. The king was so happy that when he saw the glass of Shiraz and the ham, he pulled the ham off, ate the ham, and then declared that all Shiraz, and all wine for that matter, should be served with tapas or lids. Now what I'm adding to the top of it is I have a uh, You've got your manchego cheese on top of your toasted crostini, your serrano ham, a small apple slice, and jalapeno jelly. And that is Alfonso's flight. He goes on top of the glass with a nice tempranillo wine or Rioja or a or a Shiraz. This is Alfonso's flight. Okay guys, next up our, our next dish for our uh, special wine tapas dinner that we're doing here at Relish Modern Tapas is going to be filet a la langosta, which means with lobster. And we're putting a lobster butter on a tied uh, miniature uh, filet mignon. Okay, and we're just going to put this on the grill. It's seasoned with our custom uh, seasoning blend, which is a lot of different uh, special peppers and some Lowry seasoning salt and things like that. This is a sauce that's a reduction of a Cabernet Sauvignon vinegar. Uh, it's very good. It comes from a, one particular place in uh, Spain, which uh, will include a picture of the bottle for anybody who's looking to purchase it so that you can see the brand. There you go. That's the filet mignon a la langasta. We're going to finish up uh, working on our meal and we're going to do our tatas bravas. It's a classic dish from Spain. Pretty much every tapas place does them. Uh, what I've done is I've cut these out into cylinders using the apple core. And I'm going to take them, they were boiled until they were just under pork tender. And then I'm going to fry them until they're nice and crispy brown on the outside. Uh, when we get done with that, then I'm going to go ahead and put, uh, season them with a special Brava seasoning that uh, I make here in the store. It's uh, uh, two parts uh, paprika, one part um, garlic powder, or granulated garlic, one part uh, granulated onion, and uh, one part cayenne. Okay, our potatoes are nice and golden brown. Uh, nice and crispy on the outside, which is how you want them. Okay, then you're gonna put them in the bowl. I put them in a bowl, and uh, most people are gonna wanna do that. And you're gonna hit them with a the seasoning, and then toss them. Get them over, turned over, hit them with a little more seasoning, because Taz Bravas meat literally means manly potatoes. So you want manly potatoes, and you want some seasoning on them. Okay, this is my umami ketchup, which uh, I make here in house. Uh, if you're interested in, re in the recipe for my particular umami ketchup, then you can always contact me. Um, 
at my email at chefrob1965 at hotmail.com. enough ketchup that, that you're going to get the flavor. Uh, the basics of the ketchup is it's a uh, it's a regular ketchup using sand, uh, using um, uh, regular tomatoes and, and the usual ingredients. And then it's got brown sugar and um, oyster sauce as well as the um, I dressed it with a um, I add uh, fish sauce to it to give it an extra depth of flavor. This is how we serve uh, the dish when we do our wine and tapas menu. We have a simpler version of the dish when we're not doing the wine and tapas menu. And then this is a roasted tomato aioli. Also made here in house. You just take your standard mayonnaise and you roast tomatoes in the oven and then puree them into it, add a little paprika and a little cayenne as, as you like it. And if you follow me, I'll show you how we garnish it. This is our garnish station. Yes, just a second. Okay, we're just going to get a little parsley. We get a little bit of parsley on the top of each one of them. Then these are our paprika infused breadcrumbs, and you want them to kind of stick to the top of them. And that is patatas bravas. Guys, we're going to wrap up with uh, with our last dish, which is going to be the gambas and alfio. It's a shrimp in a uh, garlic, a, uh, kind of spicy garlic oil. And I've got my skillet over the hot over the fire right now. I'm going to add some olive oil to it. But you want a decent amount of oil because you want to be able to infuse it pretty well with the garlic and the, uh, and the actual uh, paprika, so that you get some of that flavor. And as you can see, I'm putting a fair amount because I'm only doing really uh, six shrimp. So. Okay, you want to make sure you don't burn your your garlic. You don't want to get, get too hot. I'm going to flame down just a little bit because you, you definitely don't want to burn the garlic because it gives it a better taste. Now we're going to hit it with the paprika. This is, I don't know about a teaspoon. You, you just want enough to give it a nice red color to the oil. Okay. As you can see, it's nice and red. Okay. Now we're going to hit it with a little pinch red pepper flake to give it some heat and then we're going to add our shrimp to it. We want them to get a nice surface area in there so they cook well. Turn the heat up just a little bit because as you add things to it obviously the pan's going to cool down. They have a little salt and pepper so it's uh, properly seasoned. Our uh, gambas ala heel is all done. As you can see, it's uh, nice and properly cooked without being, you know, overly cooked. Because if you cook it too much, it, shrimp has a tendency to get rubbery, and that is not the case on this. And we're going to put the shrimp nice, in a nice ring around the outside. We generally serve it when we do the wine and tapas with the uh, with a couple pieces of bread, so that you can sop up that nice paprika and garlic oil, which is a uh, great flavor all of its own. That is gambas ala pia. Garnish it with a little parsley and uh, probably no pe paprika breadcrumbs because they won't show up anyway. This is, uh, once again, Ralph Hopkins, uh, executive chef of Relish Modern Tapas. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what Relish Modern Tapas is about and actually from my kind of culinary point of view, which is small plate dining. Uh, Relish is a restaurant that specializes in Spanish style cuisine but with a kind of a modern fusion where we bring in Asian flavors and, and maybe Mediterranean flavors and uh, maybe even African flavors and things like that. Small plate dining is the, the ultimate dining experience. If you're going to go out with your friends, uh, it's a truly social type of dining where everybody orders a small plate, a couple of small plates, and their meal is brought out as it's done and it's forced out to them. And the small plates are designed to be shared. 
Um, I explained earlier um, what the con or what the concept of tap is, where it came from in the history, and kind of the cute legend about it. But also, um, you need to realize that there are also small plate dining in Greece in the form of mezzanines. There's a uh, small plate dining in the form of Sakuska in Russia, which is huge buffets, a small plate, so little bitty dishes, almost like hors d'oeuvres, that you go out and pick up what you want, and then you eat, and that's to set, uh, prepare you before you eat this big, huge meal that's going to get you through the Siberian winters. Um, and there's, of course, Japanese izakaya, which arose kind of the same way as uh, Tapas did, which is the Japanese businessmen were coming into the sake houses and they were uh, or ordering sake, and they were ordering sake, and, uh, but then they were just leaving. So they figured out, if I sell them food, they can drink more sake, so I can sell more sake and I can sell them more food. And that's kind of how a small plate movie will take place. You can also obviously get sushi, which is a small plate, perfect bite. Uh, then you've got Chinese dim sum, and even the, the Mediterranean is like the Lebanese. Uh, there's a wonderful restaurant called the Venetian Caverna that is actually a, uh, uh, has a lot of small plate, what they call meza, and uh, it's right down the road from Relish. Uh, excellent restaurant, wonderful chef. Um, but that, in a nutshell, is what small plate dining is about. Having I mean, an evening of great food, great wine, all your friends and family, friends or family, and uh, spending the evening lingering over, over your family. That's what life is all about.